Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part three of the 1974 RCA AS128E 12-inch black and white solid state television. In the last video, we finally got the regulated power supply issue sorted out by making making some component changes because no matter how many out of tolerance components I replaced, the circuit simply did not work correctly. It was making about a a volt shy of what it was, and when you're only running on 12 volts, that's a big deal. So we've got that resolved, but the remaining problem is that the vertical sweep, even at maximum, still barely fills the screen. So we need to do some troubleshooting on the vertical output stage, and hopefully it's something straightforward, but so far, nothing about this TV has been straightforward. So let's take a look and see what the circuitry is like and see what our points of failure could possibly be. Now here's the vertical circuit, which is basically the other half of that same board that we were working on for the regulator. Half is for the regulator, half is for the vertical because they're using the same part number. So MAO002A and then MAO002A, so half and half. That's kind of weird. <laughs> but basically what it is, is it's an oscillator uh, that generates the waveform and the frequency and timing, and then that is amplified uh, and then sent to the vertical output transistor, which is then coupled to the vertical output transformer, um, which is a little bit different. In most solid-state designs, the, the yoke is directly driven by a transistor or transistors, but here they have it much arranged like a tube, where the output transistor is in the primary of the vertical output transformer, and the secondary then drives the yoke. And then you've got some blanking and feedback <coughs> to help with that. So, obviously, the first thing we would want to check is if we have 10 volts on the collector, if the uh, waveform looks good, and there's a couple of things that might be able to cause issues here, uh, like this 10 microfarad capacitor up here. Uh, this is just basically a, a feedback loop, and if that's open, well, actually, if that's open, then that might actually cause more height, so maybe not. Um, but yeah, basically, check this pot and see if it's still alive or if it's got kind of a dead spot up the top and it's not fully working. Uh, any of these, this value here, this R28 could go up. We could have a low gain on the output transistor. Um, and, of course, a lack of voltage is there. So, let's double check and identify where the vertical stuff is and the way that they have this lined out uh, you can see the dotted line here represents what's on the card and the rest of this stuff is off card so yeah this could be fun um, that's why I like tubes tubes are, tube, tubes are just easier for me anyways uh, let's get to it okay so first we're gonna check the blatantly obvious thing and that is, is the pot alive? Because right now it's at maximum, so I should see like zero resistance here. Okay, and if I turn this up about halfway, 20K, if I turn it up all the way, it's 60K. Well, I would assume it's a 50K because just of the way things are. So at half point, Yeah, 30k about half point. So the pot itself is okay. So now what let's do is let's see what the voltage is on the vertical output transistor, which will tell us if it's again a power issue or if it's something else. And so if we come to our vertical output transistor, which is down here, on our collector, we have 10.4 volts, which is exactly what you would hope. We got 10 volts there. We were supposed to have like 0.9 there, 0.847, that's pretty close. And like 0.3, so 0.26, that's pretty close. I don't think it's gonna care about 0.035 volt difference. Uh, so it could be assumed that the Output transistor, assuming that the gain is good, the output transistor pumps me. 
At least that's what we'd think. Uh, so I'm going to come and look here on the schematic. Just bear with me a second here. Da, 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 da. All right, so on pin 11, I should have a negative voltage. No? Oh, there we go. Minus half a volt there. Pin 12, I should have a positive voltage. About the same. Yeah, it's a little bit different. 0.62, I got 0.64. And let's see here. Now, it doesn't say what voltage I'm supposed to have on pin 11. On the downside of a 33K resistor to a, of the initial oscillator transistor on the base, I should have minus 3.56. Now, the oscillator is working, so I assume that's going to be pretty correct. Uh, but let's see, what else? What else, what else, what else? Oh yeah, one is supposed to be 12 volt supplied to the card, which we're good there. Now pin four, I should have about 30 volts AC One, two, three, and four. Yeah, see, that's not very much. Come on. One, two, three, and four. I had 10 volts there for a second, and then it went away. You see that? Let's go back here. Yeah, something ain't right here. According to this, I should have 1.6 volts peak to peak of 30, 30 cycles, not 30 volts. All right, let's bust out the scope. And let's see what our waveform looks like. Bear with me a second, we'll switch over. And let's see here. Let me first see if it's there. All right. I'm going to have to hold the camera and show you guys at the same time. All right, so there it is. Here's pin four. And let's see, we're on a 500 millivolt per scale. So five, uh, yep, about one and a half, one and a half volts division there. And let's compare the waveform. That looks about right. So we're doing good there. And it's supposed to be larger at the base of the vertical amp. That's weird. Where do you get this drop off? Why do you get such a big drop off? Anyways. All right, so our DC voltages here are good. We've got a good waveform size there. And we've got our 10 volts. So the primary of the transformer is good. They got this one ohm resistor to ground here. What else could be screwing us up? Bad yoke, maybe? Or a bad secondary? I mean, if you think about it, we've got proper size waveform right here. Let's see if it goes up and down as we adjust the vertical size. Now, this is going to be weird because I got this totally zoomed in on the scope and it's going to be fuzzy and crappy looking. But uh, that is what it is. So if we go back here to pin 4, as you can see, when I turn the vertical 
size up and down, the waveform changes proportionally. Just not much range. Should like there should be more range than that. Uh, and that's almost two volts peak to peak there. So I mean that's right there's your one and a half, which is about the the height control at midpoint. Which is what I would think and you can't really see the scope very well because of the blanking in the camera so I apologize for that but the waveform look corrects the the amplitude at the base of the transistor looks correct so let's see what it looks like on the collector which is the primary if we go to the collector of the output transistor I'm probably going to have to change the sensitivity some Yep, I am. All right, so let's back off on this a bit. It's going to be inverted because of the... Now, what did I just do? I touched something and the, the, uh, it all of a sudden filled the screen. I'm going to tap on some things here. Zoom out a bit. Hold on. Yeah, false alarm. Uh, I touched something on the size control. Interesting how my fingers near it has influence. Well, anyways, there's not much variance there. Like, that's maxed out. That's just under maxed out. You can see it doesn't fill the screen. So we need more oomph there. Just not working right. The transistor, I'll check the gain on it, but I don't think that's the issue. Uh, oh, we even have some a little bit of fold over up top here too. It's hard to see, but it's there. Yeah, let me get the phone. So we got the 12 volt source coming in here, which goes through the vertical size control, and then ends up being 0.62 volts on the collector there. And with that negative voltage there, uh, the fact that the emitter is at ground, so the, the emitter is going to be uh, more positive than the base, uh, that in theory would keep that thing shut. It should be off, because you would want the base to be more positive than the emitter. Uh, and then we've got the collector here at 0.62, at least that's what it's supposed to be, coming over here. Um, so I'm going to see, I'm going to need to follow this down and see where R28 is and where that's coming from. And maybe our 120K resistor's just gone up in value. It is possible. Alright, so coming over here, We got this uh, vertical thingamajigus here, R28. I think that's what it wanted, right? Yeah, because there's our 12 volts. And if we pull, turn this all the way up, that gets pulled down to 0.6. And on the other side of that, we got 0.62. But wouldn't... All right, what's going on here? Something ain't right. Okay, so on the low side R28, we got five volts with the size at minimum. And as we crank it up, this voltage goes down. We go down to 0 0.6. 0 0.6. So in theory, that's together. Wouldn't I see a voltage change here on the other side of this pot? It is absolutely the same, but yet the screen expands and contracts. That's coming off of pin 12 there. Let me take a quick look at that. Pin 12... Bear with me a moment here. So 
So the DC voltage there isn't changing. Which is odd. I guess it's just changing the waveform size somehow by interrupting the pulses or changing the pulses across that device. Uh, but yeah, that pin 12 there to the device hasn't changed. It's still sitting there at 0.62 volts. Right where it should be. And if I turn all this down, then this. Oh, I didn't like that. What did I do there? I touched something here. And now I lost almost all sweep. Check this out. What's going on there? So is this potentiometer bad? Well, we almost get stuff there but then we had yeah well, we got a loose connection or a bad pot or something just doesn't like that very interesting all right time to pull that module and then check the surrounding components well kids this could be a problem remember r28 that was the 120k it ain't 120k no more Come on. About 160K. That ain't no good. So although the DC voltage on the transistor is remaining the same, which could be just largely inher inherent stabilization of that circuit, uh, that would affect the amplitude of the waveform at that point, which we really can't access because it's on this card somewhere where when that's in the machine, you can't really get to it. Uh, so definitely going to replace that 120K device and then see if we get our height back. Well, that's a little better. Let's see what happens when we turn up the size. That's at a minimum right now. Turn up the size to half point. We're almost there. And then crank it all the way up and we got overscan. Let's hook up the signal generator and make sure. All right, so this is about halfway. Hold on a second here. So that's all the way at minimum. That's about halfway. And that's all the way. See how it starts to lose sync and roll? That's how it should be. All right, so we'll put that just a little tiny bit over scan there. And that sucker's good. Oh, now we're back to a little bit of nonlinearity here, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Of course, that could be under scan or something like that. It could be another issue with the horizontal out. Let's double check our power supply voltage again. We're still at 12.3 volts, which is where we're supposed to be. So we got another new issue developing here, although this is getting a little better as time goes on, so maybe that's uh, caps and things in the horizontal. So we got the power supply issue solved and we got the vertical issue solved. I got to clean that socket for sure because uh, it's definitely creating some noise in the picture. But so far, we've got power supply and vertical. Now we just need to fix the horizontal nonlinearity here that seems to be getting better the longer it's on. So definitely a sweep issue there. And then this sucker should be good. So stay tuned for part four and we'll see if we can get this one finished. Yeah, it's looking better. Thanks for watching. More stuff to come.